Thank you. Um, I deliberately started my speech with a quote from the former president, Wilson. He didn't say that he agreed or disagreed with the Azerbaijan delegation. The only thing he said that he noticed that they were speaking the same language. Now, this is very important. It's important because it reveals the fact how people conceptualize the world, how they envision the future of their country, how they understand their own existence, what mental map they have in their own hand in the end. So um, we have a very bright ambassador here in the US. It's not that I'm paying the tribute to what he has just said to me because... <laughs> no, we have very bright people in the government, employed by the government, uh, who speak various languages, who build a, a personal career, have self-esteem. That goes without saying. It's not that we don't see that. The problem is, and what I tried to explain here, is the how government communicates to its own people internally. I don't believe in... The I have no illusion about foreign aid, especially in the democracy building. And we're not here to complain or ask for something. But the language the government uses to communicate to its own people is extremely outdated. Extremely outdated. The concepts they use, the terminology they employ, the phraseology they use, actually. I mean, one of the MPs whom I personally respect, he's not a member of the Combat Party, but he's a bright lawyer himself, um, recently, relatively recently, said to the media that Ilgar Mamedov, I quote, is a lost and unsuccessful attempt by the West to have a colored revolution in Azerbaijan. End of quote. Now, uh, with, regardless of whether I'm not getting into the fact statement of whether it's true or not, but the language is quite indicative. Now we hear here and there in Azerbaijan that someone is Russian agent, someone is Iranian agent, someone is Western agent. I'm really fed enough of this. We have to pay attention to the conduct, to the process. We have to ensure that ideas become part of the process and people are valued because of the things they say. There's another thing that is overlooked, what is called intellectual dependency. That's a very different thing from the thing that the agency of change. If I studied, for example, a German philosophy, which greatly influenced myself, I can fairly enough say that I am intellectually dependent on German philosophy. I didn't study Chinese philosophy. I'm not intellectually dependent on what the greatest Chinese civilization produced. But the worldview I have is a Western. But now what we see is the government, again, communicating to its own people. I know that they say a lot of nice and sometimes true things to the West. But the way they communicate to its own people is very outdated and very Russian-like. Not in terms of the Russia instructs them, but in terms of the system, the similarity in the systems, the similarity in the problems. Look what Russia, how Russia treats its NGO and how Azerbaijani government treats its NGOs. The same talks, agents, 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 foreign aid, grants, blah, blah. How Russia treats its parties, political parties, and the political process, how Azerbaijani government treats its political parties and protests, and etc., etc., etc. Now, uh, Professor Sh uh, Brenda Schaffer mentioned about, f just touched upon uh, the, the, the Iranian influence, etc. This is another talk, by the way. The growing Islam, for example. Yes, Islam grows in Azerbaijan. But partly because it was oppressed during Soviet time, now it simply is reaching its traditional level. I think it will catch some 30, 35% of the society. Yes, it's visible. Because the number of voters increase who have some religious aspiration. And for any politician, including the incumbent party, and they do so, and which is fair enough and it's, it's a legitimate tool in political campaign, you have to address the needs of the believers. In that sense, yes, Islam has become politically, 
political factor, but not in the sense that Islam is, is becoming a political factor in a way that any Islamic group can grab the power. They have significant and very deep uh, disagreements among themselves. They have different intellectual dependencies. Some depend on Iran, some depend on Turkey, some depend on Arab. And there's no way they can come to any agreement among themselves. So let us just stop these speculations and manipulations about Islam, about Russia, about Iran, without, with due account to the real geostrategical threats. And I agree with you, Mr. Ambassador. They are threats. They're existential threats. And they're not going to go anywhere if the government changes. Mm -hmm. And we do share that concern. Which is also about Karabakh. If, I don't know if there are Armenians here, no matter from which part of the world they come. But I also want our American friends to know this. The, it's not just about Azerbaijan and Armenia. In the beginning, in the end of the 90s, in the beginning... I'm sorry, Mr. Gadeli, you have if to I may just, your, yeah, just finish, finish comments, this please. particular comment, Quick. because this is very important. This also reveals how deep understanding in our society is. We have to have a clearer picture. And the end of the 80s and the beginning of 90s, we had two different trends. In our, Armenians wanted Karabakh at any price. Azerbaijanis wanted independence at any price. When you want something at any price, you pay the highest price possible. And what we have, Azerbaijan got its independence, but lost a control over the Karabakh and surrounding area. Armenia got control over Karabakh and surrounding areas, but lost its independence. Now, I, have, I want to understand everyone here in this audience. Occupation is the price Azerbaijan pays for its independence. Now, Mr. Ambassador, okay, I want you to be know that I there is an understanding in opposition about that. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact that we don't talk each other in our country. Not, not, not you and myself, but there is no talk in Azerbaijan between... <laughs> I know, I, can, I know that I can access you. And in fact, unlike Americans here, I have a luxury to ignore your diplomatic status because for me, you're first of all my fellow compatriot. But because we don't have a talk, a dialogue, a process, there is no process. No one can misuse it or use it if there is no process. Okay, thank you. Actually, I'm yes. going to have to I'm, I'm sorry. The romantic period yeah. is over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's I'm, not romantic, absolutely. Okay. All right, thank you. I'm